Hi guys, welcome to our show. Once you see my face, you know it's physical sciences. My name is Musa Chauke and we'll be looking at physical sciences today. We will try and assist you on how to get easy marks in the exam and try and correct what the errors that you make during exam. Today's show is sponsored by Liberty. Liberty has been sponsoring South African education for over 30 years. So big ups to Liberty. Without you, this show would not be possible. Guys, don't forget to download the Tenfold Education app. It is like having a teacher in your back pocket. You can also follow us on YouTube. We are at Mindset Learn. Without any waste of time, let us get to the business of the day. We are looking at physical sciences. I will definitely show you how to score easy marks in the exam. Remember, we are looking at paper two. So your question two on paper two is always organic chemistry. Let us start with that organic chemistry. What are some of the things that you need to know in organic chemistry? We are starting with naming. You should know how to name organic molecules. What must you remember there on naming? We know that if our carbon chain length is one, it is going to be meth. And if we have two, we know that we have eth. If we have three, we have prop. And then four is going to be but. Five, we have pent. And then six, we have hex. And then our seven here, we have hept. We have hept. And then the last one, which is eight, we have oct. So once you know all these things, it will be easier for you to do what to, to name the organic compounds. What do we need to know as well as the functional groups? We have the alkanes. We have the alkanes. What must you know with the alkanes? Is that alkanes are saturated. They are saturated. An examiner can ask you to define saturated hydrocarbons. So here you speak about organic compounds. You speak about organic compounds. Organic compounds that consist that consist of single bonds single bonds only single bonds only between carbon atoms so we have single bonds only between carbon atoms that's how you define saturated how do i then identify this in the exam i can have an example here i have two or three carbons. Remember now that our carbon is in group 14. It must have four bonds around it. So we have three carbons here. Yeah? What must you then do? You come back and check here. Three carbons, we said prop. But because these are alkanes, the ending is A and E or A in here. So meaning I'll say prop. Pain. I'm going to have propane here because it's single bond. Another example that we can have here is, let us say we extend this or expand it to one, two, three, four, five. We have five carbons. What will be the name then if I have five carbons? What must I do? I must come and check if it's five carbons. What is five carbons? We come here, we have pent. Do we only have single bonds here? The answer is yes, and therefore we have pentane. The answer will become pentane there. Don't forget the ending. It's supposed to be A and E because we are talking about what? We are talking about alkanes. We can also have what you call the alkenes. The alkenes. Alkenes have a double bond. So with the alkenes, you are looking at a double, a double bond. How can I identify an alkene? The ending here, it's E and E, or we can say in. So if I have, for example, one, the double bond and the carbon here, remember that I must have four bonds around the what? Around the carbon. So if I have two carbons, the name here will be but, but I must but two, in fact, not even but two, but in. This is but in. However, if I have one, two, three, four, five, and I have a double bond here, I'll write all my 
hydrogens around the carbons. Remember that we must always have four hydrogens around the what? Around the carbon atom. So if I have something like this, how do I then name this? So the safest way to go, you always count nearest to the functional group. This is my functional group here. So this becomes carbon number one, two, I have one, two, I have three here, and I have four. So it's one, two, three, four, five. In fact, we have five carbons here. We have five carbons here. We have five carbons. So if we have five carbons, we must then identify where is my double bond. So carbon number one is on carbon number two. So I'll say my answer here will be pent, but I must indicate where's the double bond. So it's pent two in. Pent two in. And that's how we'll definitely answer this one. Let us say we have another one here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I have my double bond here. I can see carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. If I start counting from here to bond number three, even this side number three. So it doesn't matter where I start counting. What is six again? We have hex. I must indicate now where's the double bond. It's on carbon number three. So it's going to be hex three in. Don't forget that when you say hex here, you must have your hyphen. So there is a what? A hyphen. Uh, between the letter and the, and the number. Alright, let us then move and check here what else are we required to know. We must be able to draw the structure. So what I've been doing now, we were busy drawing what structures. Let us look at isomers now. An examiner can ask you about isomers. How do we then summarize isomers? Now, the first thing that you should know is how to define an isomer. What is an isomer? You should know that isomers, these are organic compounds, organic compounds, organic compounds that have the same, that have the same, it has the same molecular formula, molecular, molecular formula, molecular formula, but different structural formula, different structural formula, different structural formula. So this is what we call an isomer. So meaning now we have three types of isomers, three types of isomers, three types of what of isomers. So we should know as well the three types of what of isomers. The first one that we know the first one that we know, it is called chain isomer. Chain isomer. And then the second one that we know, it is positional isomer. Positional isomer. And then the third one, we have chain, we have positional, and we have functional isomer. Functional functional isomer. Okay, then how do you define chain isomer? The way you have defined an isomer, but you are going to change on structural formula. You must speak about what here? You must speak about different chain length. So here we have different, different chain length. Different chain length. What about here? We speak about different position different position. So we have different what here? Different positional group. So we can just fix that quickly. We have different, yeah? Different, different position. We have different position of a what? Of a functional group. Different position of what? Of functional group. I'll show you just now. And then functional isomer, they have the same molecular formula, but different functional group. So here we have different functional group, different functional group, different functional group. That's what we have here. 
chem. So we have three chain isomer, positional isomer and fractional isomer. How do you then identify a chain isomer? A chain isomer. Let us look at this chain isomer. So I can have an example here where I have one carbon, two, three, four, or even five. What do you know about five carbons? We know that is pent. What we are going to check now is to check if does it consist of single bonds only. And if it does, it means that we have a what? We have an alkane. We have an alkane. So we have that here. So the name becomes what here? Becomes pentane. Pentane. Now, if I'm tasking the exam to draw a what? A functional, in fact, a chain isomer of pentane. What can I do? And why is this one called a chain isomer? It must have the same molecular formula, but different chain length. All right. And then let us count here. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it's C5 and then H12. What do I have here? It's by molecular formula. So meaning that the chain isomer of pentane must also have C5H12. What must be different there is the length. How do we do that? So the isomer will become 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In fact, it can become 4, and then we have a side chain here. We have a side chain somewhere here. So we can have a side chain here. If I draw all my hydrogens around the carbon here, you will realize that the longest chain that I have here, it's now four. The longest chain is four. This will become number one, number two, number three, and number four. So if I have that, it means my name now won't be pentane. It will be one, two, three, four, but something happened here on carbon number two, I have a methyl. So I will say two dash, I have methyl, or you can say hyphen, methyl. What's my longest chain? Is butane, butane, all right. So I have two methyl butane and I have pentane. How many carbons do I have here? I still have five. What about hydrogen? I have what? I have 12. So what do you notice here is that pentane, and 2-methylbutane have the same molecular formula but different chain length. We call them what? We call them chain isomer. So these ones will become chain isomer. Let us go to functional isomer. Functional isomer. Okay, functional, functional isomer. What did we say about functional isomer? They have the same molecular formula but different functional group. Let us look at two of the functional groups that we have here. We can look at the aldehyde, the aldehyde, and we can also look at the ketones. We can look at the aldehyde and the ketones. Okay, what do I know about aldehydes again? The ending is al. What about ketone? The ending is one. Okay, the ending is one. Okay, let us look at this now. One. Two, three, four. This is how I identify an aldehyde, okay? And then this is how I will identify a ketone, a double bond and oxygen. If I write all my hydrogens around this carbon here, okay, and then I write all my hydrogens here, you will realize that it has the same molecular formula, but different functional group. Different functional group. Okay, how many carbons do I have here? I have one, two, three, four. What will be the name here? It's going to be but. Let's fix that quickly. It's going to be but. So we have but. I must indicate where I saw a what a ketone. And then on number two, two, dash, and then one. That's my name there. But with aldehyde, I'll start counting from here. One, two, three, and then I have what? I have four. Now my name, this side will become what will become butanal. 
butyl null. What do you notice here is that aldehyde and a ketone, they have the same functional, they have the same molecular formula rather, but different functional group because one is what? One is an aldehyde and the other one is a what? It's a ketone. So once you are given a ketone and an aldehyde, you should know that these are what are functional what? Isomers. Let us look at positional isomer very quickly. Positional isomer very quickly. Now, with positional isomer, with positional isomer, what do we need to know here is that it has the same molecular formula but different position, different position of the functional group. Let us check what we have here. Let us look at what we have in terms of alcohols here. I'm not sure if you can notice that I have an OH there, which is called the hydroxyl group. It is called the hydroxyl group. So in the exam, once you see OH, you know that you have the what there? Hydroxyl group. But not just OH, it must be OH only. All right. What would be the name here? We start counting nearest to the functional groups. I have three, I have four, and I have five. What would be my name here? It's going to be pair. Tan, I must indicate where the alcohol is. So it's on number one. Okay. If I have another alcohol here, which is five carbons, however, I shift my OH to be here on carbon number two, if I count from right to left. Let us look at that and see if the name is going to change. If the name is going to change. My name is going to change here because I will count from here. One, two, three, four, five. What do I know now? This is pentan. However, my alcohol is on carbon number two. So it's pentan dash or hyphen two hyphen. And then I have all. What do you notice here? The position of the functional group. It is not what? It's not the same. It's different. Here was position on number one. Here position on number what? On number two. We can also identify that this is primary alcohol. Primary. Okay. This is primary alcohol. And then this one here is what is secondary what? Alcohol. We have secondary alcohol there. That's what you need to know. All right, uh, grade 12s. What we can do in the meantime, let's take a break and then we'll come back shortly.